Okay, keep having power problems. Um, <laughs> anyway, this is ASB part three of my uh, pack breakdown here. Um, Outsider Survivor doing part three of the bug out bag breakdown. So I was talking about, uh, I have a guide to edible plants. Um, lady named Jennifer Hahn and Max Smith put this together. Um, her book on edible plants for this region um, is fantastic. So if, if you're in the Pacific Northwest, uh, up and down the Oregon coast, Washington coast, California, Alaska even, uh, check out her stuff. Uh, this little tiny guide is just a little fold out pamphlet, waterproofed, and it has a variety of very, very useful things, kelp and uh, wood sorrel and just just there's a wide variety in here, 40 of them, really useful stuff. Uh, I thought that was worth carrying. It's always nice to be able to confirm, uh, look, you know, check it up against a picture and say, oh, that is the plant, that's the correct plant, have it, it has a description on it, so um, it's good to have. I carry, wrapped up in plastic and duct tape, uh, nine extra AAA batteries. That's enough for uh, one of my headlamps three times. So. I carry some combination sunblock and bug spray type stuff. So you can just rub a little bit of that on. Uh, I burn really easily, so I need to carry sunblock. If I'm out in a hot place, I go up like gasoline. So got to have the sunblock. Um, I have a little compass on a string I can hang around my neck. I have a fire kit. Uh, inside the fire kit, there are a variety of things. Um, let me see, what do I got in here? I got steel wool. I have an, a little, another candle. Uh, I have a ferrocium rod, uh, which is a fire striking, spark making device. A uh, small candle. Uh, I have some fuel tablets. Uh, I have a magnifying lens. I have char cloth. Uh, just a variety of ways of starting fire, getting a fire going. Um, I, you know, it's just good to be able, be able to have a variety of ways. You know, this 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 kit could make uh, any number of fires. It has been making fires for years, and uh, I haven't had to add too much back into it. Replace a lighter every once in a while. Add another chunk of a solid fuel tablet. I talk about it in another in another video. Always adding something else every once in a while. Got some steel wool in there now. Um, Lots of uses for the fire kit. Good to have. Make one for yourself. Doesn't need to be huge. Um, it's pretty easy to get a fire going, unless you're in really, really wet conditions, terrible conditions. And uh, there's a solution to that too. Uh, you've got a split piece of wood open. You cut into a log, split it open, and bust out your Alaska match. Uh, road flare. Um, I know they're heavy and they're bulky and a lot of people cringe at this and say oh, that's a lot of weight to carry around in a pack but if you need to get a fire going or signal for help or scare off an animal uh, 15 minutes of heat light fire uh, whatever you need you got you got I got I carry two of them and uh, if you slice a, a log in half and sandwich this in between it as it burns down It'll just light that sucker up. Uh, you don't want to try to light a pile of twigs with it or anything. It doesn't really work that well for that. You want to get a piece of chunk of wood open, split it in two or three pieces, put this in the middle, and let it burn through. Uh, don't try to light a pile of twigs. It'll just incinerate all the twigs and it won't do anything. Um, but it's good to have a road flare. But play around with starting fires with them. You, you, it's easy to make the wrong kind of fire with them. So... Uh, I carry two of those, and uh, I live out in a place where it rains like 180 days a year or something, so uh, being able to start a fire can be difficult, and that's one of the that's one of the things I suggest people carry is a road flare. Um, I carry a folding saw. Uh, if you don't want the big survival knife and you think that's silly and you're not going to use that as a spear or anything. Uh, and, you know, you think your little Swiss Army knife or whatever is good enough, and that's fine. You're, you're, you know what? You're, 
you're right it, it is uh, you can you can do it with that but uh, one thing to definitely take in my opinion is a folding saw um, this is a Corona uh, pole saw razor tooth saw um, it is a pull saw because all the teeth go in one direction on the back stroke uh, they cut uh, I think that is I think it's it's my preferred kind of saw it's super super thin so it's easy to push in and you're cutting less wood when you're pulling out and it, all the teeth are working at it so you that power stroke where you have all your strength uh, does a lot of force and uh, does a lot of good cutting uh, I like them um, it fits well in my pack and they're small and compact and inexpensive so uh, definitely 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 have some kind of folding saw uh, you could you could leave a lot of other tools out as long as you have this folding saw uh, you can do an awful lot uh, if you don't want to carry an axe and you don't want to carry you know big survival knives and stuff folding saw uh, let's see what else do we got here I think all else that I have in here is a big pile of power bars I probably have uh, about 14 of them in here uh, that gives me a full loadout for a week or two with my gear. Um, no, no problem. <laughs> I could do. I could be eating like a king for a week, or you know, uh, doing just fine for two. Um, a lot of people want to strap firearms to the outside of their pack and all that, and I think it's nice to be able to keep things, you know, carefully concealed. Most packs now are built with a backpack cover in the bottom of them that. Uh, you cover your backpack with like a rain fly and uh, get one of those for your pack that way if you do have AR-14, AR-15s and you know, bazookas or whatever strapped to your pack and you don't want somebody to see that you can uh, cover it up with that rain fly um, I see a lot of guys with really tactical looking military loadouts and if uh, you wanted to be seen someone saw you walking on the trail uh, they might report you. Uh, maybe they wouldn't see it because you're all camouflaged up and everything. But uh, but be careful out there. That dressing like that might attract more attention than it's worth. Um, so that's a look at my bug out bag. I had to break it down there in a couple of videos because uh, of technical malfunctions. But uh, that that's just a general look at it. Um, I'll probably do some more in-depth things on some other aspects of this pack at a later time. But it's good to have a bug out bag that can get you where you're going. This one, as I said earlier on, weighs about 40 pounds when it's all loaded down. And that's with the water weight. Um, but a lot of that weight would go away. You'd drink the water and the alcohol and the alcohol stoves would burn. So, you know, uh, it would get lighter at, at, as you go. And you can pull that excess food, that extra layer of food out. Uh, so you can lighten the pack even more. I think that's a good thing to do so you can segment it so you can have a huge pack uh, That's ready to go in your in your car or you know a good sized pack in the, in the back of your trunk That's fully loaded out for uh, two weeks or three weeks or a month or whatever you feel is appropriate um, But you could also just go into it real quick and pull out a duffel bag or a little stuff sack Get lots of these little stuff sacks and separate your gear in them and just say oh that's a you know that's two weeks worth of food in that stuff sack and just pull that out throw it off to the side I only need one week's of food I only need one week supply so I'll just go with my basic stuff in the bottom of my pack um, so that way you can solve your problem of like oh should I have tons of food or no food why not just have the food there so that if you're in a situation where you think you might need the food you got it um, you can always take it out of your pack uh, whenever you want to or trade it um, as far as longer term bug out situations, um, this is this pack is not designed for that. This is not uh, there's not a lot of traps in here. There's no traps and snares. I don't have a long range rifle in here. Um, it's only to get me to the edge of the wilderness. It's not to sustain me along the way. Just to keep my belly full with the food that's in it and the the hydration options that I have. I can boil water and stuff. Um, but it's not it's not to hunt rabbits and catch rats and 
you know, I'm not going to try to live off the land because you might just be stuck in a, you know, a roadside uh, embankment for a couple of days while the police are going crazy everywhere or military is coming through or, you know, mobs are running past and you just got to bunker down in the bushes for, you know, 24 hours or two days or whatever and wait for this stuff to calm down before you scurry out in the middle of the night. Um, who knows what the situation is, but I think it's good to have extra food. A lot of guys, they, they go food light and I go food heavy. I'd rather have that. I can always dump it or get rid of it or trade it. Uh, but if you don't have it, then you don't even have a choice of what you want to do when the time comes. So throw an extra stuff sack full of food in there of, you know, dense grains, uh, quinoa, amaranth, uh, stuff that, you know, eight and ten grain breakfast cereals, uh, stuff that's in, in bulk bags so it's form fitting. Not a bunch of packages, not a bunch of boxes. Uh, go to um, PCC or Whole Foods, the kind of health food, uh, kind of hippie type stores, and they have bulk bins with dried soups, lentil and split pea and black bean and corn chowder and, and all these different flavors, and you can just stock up to the, stock up on those all you want and put them in big bulk beans. You can interchange the flavors and mix them all together. There's chili, and uh, you know, and you can just uh, intercombine all the flavors all you want. That's what I take with me when I go backpacking. I have a bunch of extra grains and bean soups in here. Um, they they form fit into into the shape of my pack. If you got a bunch of boxes and little packages and stuff, there's a lot of wasted space and wasted. Uh, there's air in between there, whereas mine are very dense and packed down and when you start dealing with a, a pack with a bunch of weight in it, having that the weight close to your body is very important. As the weight gets further and further away from your back, it starts to pull on you and it has leverage. And that leverage is much more powerful than just the weight you're carrying. So even if you have, you know, oh, I only got, you know, 40 pounds in this pack. I only got 40 pounds, but I see a lot of packs that are very square and they come way away from your back in the back. Uh, as they stick out back in the back, <laughs> um, as they as they protrude, uh, and people put a lot of weight far away from their back, and uh, I think that's the mistake I see with a lot of these military packs. That that doesn't make any sense to me. I think they're po poorly designed in that respect. That a lot of weight gets distributed away from the body, uh, where it sets you off balance and makes that relatively light amount of weight much more. Uh, uncomfortable on your body <clears throat> so uh, I'm rambling on here doing a big long bug out bag review I hope that's not too long I think three parts now um, all right uh, outsider survivor just doing my bug out bag review and I gotta throw all this gear back in here hope that I don't that it shouldn't take me too long or I might have to cut some of it out if it's taking me too long to put it all back in the bag all right stay safe in the woods